the James Webb Space Telescope has made recent discoveries that have challenged the foundations of our modern theories. The telescope has discovered phenomena that seem to question everything we thought we understood about the structure of the cosmos in a revolutionary set of studies. These revolutionary discoveries are changing our understanding of the cosmos and igniting fresh interest among cosmologists worldwide. Could our established cosmological ideas be truly flawed? Are we on the verge of a fundamental change that will reshape our understanding of the universe? Join us in this video as we uncover the modern theories James Webb Telescope just debunked. The James Webb Space Telescope is the main observatory of the next decade, serving thousands of astronomers worldwide. It investigates every stage of our universe's history, from the first brilliant glows after the Big Bang to the birth of solar systems capable of supporting life on planets such as Earth, as well as the evolution of our own solar system. James Webb represents a significant advancement in our understanding of the cosmos and our beginnings, built on the findings made by the Hubble Space Telescope. It is a world-class observatory with a huge infrared telescope with a 6.5-metre main mirror. Webb's purpose is to see farther into space to observe the universe's first stars and galaxies and further into nearby dust clouds to examine the development of planets and stars. James Webb is so large, almost the size of a tennis court. It was planned to be folded origami style to fit inside the rocket and then unfolded in space like a transformer into its operational configuration. The James Webb Telescope was launched towards the end of 2021. It was a joint project of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency. The launch took place precisely on December 25, 2021, from French Guiana on an Ariane 5 rocket. Webb orbits the Sun 1.5 million kilometres from the Earth. This is indeed an exciting mission to look back in time at the first stars and galaxies, delivering and providing us with a broader understanding of the origins of our universe. However, the more we probe the big cosmic unknowns, the more puzzles we encounter about the cosmos. The same may be said about James Webb. Indeed, one of Webb's first significant discoveries was both thrilling and unsettling. It uncovered the presence of fully formed galaxies much sooner than the so-called standard model of cosmology had predicted. According to the standard model, which serves as the foundation for almost all studies on the subject, a definite and precise sequence of events occurred after the Big Bang. First, gravity pulled denser portions of the cooling cosmic gas closer, which expanded to create stars and black holes. The force of gravity then drew the stars together to form galaxies. However, the web data showed that, at least in terms of the standard model, some big galaxies developed too quickly. This was no little difference. The discovery is similar to parents and their children appearing in a narrative when the grandparents are still children. This isn't the only time this has happened recently. Other discoveries have challenged what we thought we knew about the universe. One example is how fast the universe is getting bigger, called the Hubble Constant. Scientists still can't settle on a single number for how fast this expansion is happening, which adds to the puzzle. There are two major methods for calculating it. One includes measurements of the early universe, such as those provided by the web. The other involves calculating distances between stars in the present day cosmos. Despite decades of effort, these two methodologies continue to provide contradictory results. Initially, Scientists expected this difference to disappear as data improved, but the problem has remained despite vastly improved data. Furthermore, recent data from the web has worsened the issue. This pattern indicates a problem in the model, not in the data. Two severe flaws in the standard model of cosmology would be cause for alarm, but the model has already been patched up several times in the last half century to better match the best known data. 
scientists and astronomers are beginning to suspect that something is seriously wrong. Not only do some of us feel we may need to reconsider the standard framework of cosmology, we may also need to modify how we think about some of the most fundamental elements of our universe. The standard model of cosmology is appropriately viewed as an achievement of human creativity. It is a powerful combination of hard-won evidence and rare field abstract mathematical physics. Its beginnings may be traced back to Edwin Hubble's discovery in the 1920s that the universe was expanding. This was the first piece of evidence supporting the Big Bang Theory. Then, in 1964, radio astronomers found the cosmic microwave background, or the fossil radiation, that hit us shortly after the cosmos began expanding. That discovery revealed that the early universe was a hot, dense soup of subatomic particles that has since cooled and become less dense. Over the last 60 years, cosmology has become increasingly accurate in its ability to account for the best known facts about the cosmos. However, to achieve such great accuracy, astrophysicists have had to propose the existence of universe components for which we have no direct evidence. According to today's standard model, just roughly 4% of the universe is made up of normal matter, including all living things, planets, and everything else that can be seen. The remaining are unseen substances known as dark matter and dark energy, which account for about 28 and 68% of the total. Another unusual change applied to the normal model is cosmic inflation. The idea developed in 1981 to resolve the paradoxes resulting from an earlier version of the Big Bang, posits that the early universe expanded exponentially for a fraction of a second after the Big Bang. This theory addresses some issues while creating others. Notably, most versions of the theory hold that, rather than being just one universe, ours is just one among an unlimited number of universes. However, the others may be forever invisible to us, not just in reality, but also in principle. The features of the standard model aren't suspicious on their own. Scientists frequently find indirect evidence for invisible things, like extremely dense singularities within black holes. However, with the unexpected data from James Webb about galaxy formation and the increasing discrepancy in the Hubble constant, it's natural to question whether the model might be flawed or incomplete. At this stage, a common story about how science works is frequently used to ease concerns. It works like this. Researchers believe they have a successful hypothesis, but additional data reveal it is wrong. The scientists returned to the blackboards, coming up with fresh ideas that allowed them to strengthen their hypothesis by better matching the facts. It's a story of success and humility and scientists love to tell it. And that could be the case in this instance. Perhaps cosmologists only need to discover a new dark thing or other to solve the issues James Webb is making us face and keep our understanding of the cosmos in line with the best available cosmological evidence. However, there is another possibility here. Maybe we're at a place where we need a big change from the usual way of thinking about how everything in the universe works. This change might make us rethink the basic parts of the universe and even how we see space and time. Cosmology is beyond any other science. Cosmology challenges scientists to confront fundamental concerns regarding the environment in which science functions, such as the nature of time, the nature of space, the nature of law-like regularity, and the role of the observers performing the observations. However, because cosmologists operate so close to the line between science and philosophy, they become constantly tormented by the ghosts of basic assumptions hidden invisible in the instruments we use. This may include the assumption that scientific rules do not change over time. But that's exactly the kind of assumption we'll need to start examining to figure out what's wrong with the traditional model. One hypothesis advanced by physicist Lee Smolin and philosopher Roberto Manganbera Unger is that physical rules might evolve and alter over time. Different laws may even compete with one another in terms of efficacy. 
An even more extreme option, as suggested by physicist John Wheeler, is that every act of observation affects the universe's future and even its previous history. In working to understand quantum physics puzzles, Dr. Wheeler imagined a participatory cosmos in which every act of observation was, in some way, a fresh act of creation. It's not clear how these big changes in how we think about science could actually help us make sense of the tricky cosmological data that's confusing us. Part of the problem is that the data gets influenced by the theoretical assumptions of those who gather it. Stepping back and rethinking such principles of our knowledge would require a leap of faith, but a revolution could end up being the greatest path to development. That was definitely the case with scientific achievements such as Copernicus's heliocentrism, Darwin's theory of evolution, and Einstein's relativity. All three theories had a huge cultural impact, affecting the feeling of our unique location in the universe and questioning our intuition that humans were fundamentally different from other creatures. They also challenged our trust in common sense concepts about the flow of time. Any such scientific breakthrough would probably have equivalent ramifications in our knowledge of ourselves. According to the philosopher Robert Creese, philosopher and historian of science at Stony Brook University, philosophy is essential when further research may not address a scientific question. It's not certain whether that's what's required to solve the cosmological crisis. But if additional alterations and changes don't work, we may need a new story of the universe and a new means to communicate it. However, while the cosmos itself may be limited, the portion that is accessible to humans is finite. Even with the expanding universe, with all its galaxies, stars, planets, molecules, atoms, and subatomic particles, there is only so much we can analyze. As a result of the total number of particles and quantity of energy accessible in the universe, we can only discern a finite amount of information about our world. The entire quantity of information available in the cosmos is finite, as is our ability to learn about it. There is a limit to the amount of energy we can access, the particles we can view, and the measurements we can take. That does not mean we're done or shouldn't try to learn everything we can. We can only push the boundaries of knowledge as far as they can go. If we keep looking, there is still a great deal we don't know and a great deal of science that is hidden. Perhaps the current unknowns will be resolved in the near future. But what is known is finite, which indicates that certain things will always remain unknown. The cosmos may still be unlimited, but our understanding of it will never be. Regardless, the future discoveries of the James Webb Space Telescope are exciting. The JWST has successfully completed its first year of scientific operation in orbit from its location almost 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. James Webb completed its first deep field campaign, turned its infrared optics on Mars and Jupiter, obtained spectra directly from an exoplanet's atmosphere, blocked out a star's light to reveal the debris disk orbiting it. It detected its first exoplanet and observed some of the earliest galaxies in the universe, those that existed at the cosmic dawn. In addition, the James Webb Telescope took the most detailed and breathtaking images ever of the iconic celestial objects. As the Webb Space Telescope begins its second year of gathering photographs of the depths of space, it has already revealed a treasure trove of beauty from throughout the cosmos, both near and far from home. The research of cosmic dawn which began some one billion years after the Big Bang, is a key focus of the Webb project. This period is also known as the Epoch of Reionization, since it is when the first galaxies appeared. This caused the neutral hydrogen that penetrated the intergalactic medium, IgM, to reionize, rendering the cosmos transparent. The major redshift and existence of neutral hydrogen make it difficult to examine this time in visible light, making it the ultimate frontier of cosmic surveys. Because of the lack of clarity at this time, it was known as the Cosmic Dark Ages. The only method to detect light from this epoch is to observe the 21-centimetre transition line, which is visible in the mid-infrared spectrum 
but is inaccessible to contemporary detectors, or the H-alpha emission line, which is visible in the radio spectrum. According to recent research, a multinational team led by the Capitan Astronomical Institute, KOI, resolved the H-alpha emission line. This was done using data from James Webb's MIRI instrument, delivering the first verified identification of galaxies at cosmic dawn. Astronomers want to push the boundaries even farther during cycle two. To begin, Swinburne University of Technology's Pi Carl Glazebrook and a global team were given 615 hours to complete a JWST large area 3D parallel survey. This will consist of pure parallel observations of a thousand square arc minutes using JWWST's Near Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph, NEARIS. They say that the resultant study will offer spectra and redshift readings for 60,000 galaxies from cosmic noon to cosmic dawn, around 10 to 11 billion to 13 billion years ago, from the birth of the first stars and galaxies to the birth of the second generation of stars, or population two stars. A large area redshift scan of this magnitude will allow us to measure 3D clustering in the cosmic growth epoch, exposing the precise relationship between dark matter halos and assembling baryons. It will also provide a benchmark set of stellar mass functions for complete spectroscopic type defined samples, address the origin of galactic quenching, provide 2D abundance and age measurements of galaxies, measure galactic buildup, and provide a census of rare Z bright galaxies and other rare objects at all redshifts. The survey's size will also allow for data-driven discovery using modern machine learning techniques, finding novelties and surprises in the early cosmos. Carl Glazebrook and the team that conducted the study stated, P. Hakim Attic of the Institute of Astrophysics at Paris and his colleagues proposed the gravitational lensing and near-cam imaging to probe the early galaxy formation and sources of rayonization or glimpse. They call it observation campaign. The near-cam ATEC and his team will examine low-mass galaxies a few hundred million years after the Big Bang by obtaining ultra-deep photos with Webb's near-infrared camera. During their 148-hour observation period, they want to explore the mechanisms driving galaxy creation. This includes gas accretion, star formation, and the feedback preventing future star formation. They claim that this will accomplish three major purposes. Number one is to quantify the proportion of dim galaxies at Z larger than six. This will be done in order to set for the first time critical observational benchmarks for galaxy formation theories that have never been tested in this unexplored terrain. Secondly, to establish a strong limit on the weakest galaxy's contribution to cosmic reionization. Third, to investigate the normal galaxy population during the Dark Ages, which is still beyond the reach of present programs. Professor Daniel Einstein, a professor at Harvard University and a cosmologist, and a worldwide team were given 137.1 hours for their proposal to reveal the redshift frontier using JWST. This will include a deep six filter medium band imaging study using a near camera to find galaxies with redshifts larger than 15. The features of these early galaxies will test and inform ideas of galaxy formation. They will then allow astronomers to make discoveries about the early universe's mechanics. This includes speculations regarding the hypothetical presence of early dark energy to explain the disparity between cosmic expansion measurements, known as the Hubble tension. The team also wants to run this survey concurrently with a deep multi-object spectroscopic study using near-spec of galaxy candidates in and around the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, QDF. They claim that the spectra will reveal precise information on individual high redshift galaxies, not simply stacks or averages. All of these will enable us to examine chemical enrichment, stellar populations, star formation histories, and nuclear black holes in the first billion years of the universe. Furthermore, one of the most anticipated features of the Webb project 
is how it will aid in the present transition in exoplanet science. Previously, astronomers were just concerned with the discovery process, and now new equipment, methodologies and analytics are changing the emphasis to characterization. Since the great majority of exoplanets have only been found indirectly, limits on their habitability have had to be determined using information about their parent star, orbital distance and mass. However, because of Webb's better infrared optics and sensitivity, scientists hope to directly view exoplanets and gather spectra from their atmospheres. They want to point James Webb's mirrors towards neighbouring M-type or red dwarf stars and associated rocky planets, a few of which have just been confirmed. Red dwarfs, which account for around 75 to 80 percent of all stars in the cosmos, are also likely to host rocky planets inside their habitable zones, or HZs. However, these planets are expected to be tidally locked with their suns, and red dwarfs are prone to flare activity, raising concerns about their capacity to retain atmospheres in the long run. Dr. Shubham Kanodia of the Carnegie Institution of Washington and his colleagues were given 132.39 hours for their program named Red Dwarfs and the Seven Giants in order to solve this mystery. This enticingly titled research will analyze the atmospheres of massive rocky planets orbiting M-type stars, addressing one of JWST's core science goals. Dr. Shubham Kanodia and his colleagues will use Webb's Near Infrared Spectrometer near spec, to look for short-period Jupiter-sized planets orbiting red dwarfs. Their goal is to identify the atmospheric composition and metallicity of 7M dwarf short-period Jupiters and compare them to gas giants orbiting more massive yellow-type or F-type, sun-like or G-type, and orange dwarf K-type stars. They will do this by comparing their atmospheres to those of our Sun. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.